The treatment paradigm today for mantle cell lymphoma I think is fairly well established and fairly um, much the same on both sides of the Atlantic in fact. So in a young patient group it's a high dose cytarium based regimen usually followed by an autologous stem cell transplant and the evidence for rituximab maintenance is pretty strong. Uh, you could argue what high dose cytarium regimen you use, there are a number of them and I, I don't think there's too much to um, pick between them so use the one that you're comfortable with I guess. For, for older patients, and you can, dis, you can you know, argue what age cutoff one might use there, but generally I think 65 is where the more intensive regimens have used that as an upper age uh, cutoff. So above that age, then you're into a bendamustine or CHOP based therapy. Uh, uh, you can argue about, again, the relative merits of rituximab maintenance using those two regimens. Uh, and for the frail elderly, there's no sort of clear standard of care. So that's frontline regimens. I think in the relapse setting, it's clear that BTK inhibitors are pretty much, I, I'm going to say standard of care now, almost across the board as your second line therapy. Uh, usually as a single agent, we just had some discussion about the relative value of adding rituximab into uh, ibrutinib in that setting. On the panel, generally everybody was using it as a single agent. Um, and yeah, highly active uh, drug. Beyond that, then you're getting into all sorts of potential treatments. And as we're generally not curing patients, with the, with the odd exception of the very young fit patient where an allogeneic stem cell transplant is potentially curative, um, it's all about how you sequence your therapies and how you maximize quality of life uh, and, uh, and duration of life, of course, in these patients.